in this video, we're going to go into some more detail as far as handling or working with text items, your fonts, um, how to make sure that they are going to be cut out correctly. For example, we're going to just do an example family name sign. You're going to hit your text tools and then this first box text compose. I'm going to change the size here, just up it to five inches for now. And we're going to find a font that we like. This could be one you've downloaded before. This is an is this is one I've downloaded before that I like. I'm going to type the monies. After you've typed your sentence, word, phrase, whatever you're doing, to get out of this menu, you hit or click anywhere on this grid. Now, if you have to go back in and edit or you realize you spelt something wrong, just double click and you can see the cursor wherever you click or if you need to highlight a word and change it, you can do it that way. If for whatever reason you're, you're trying to look through and find a font that you like, but you wanna see what the word or phrase looks like in that font, if you highlight, so click and drag monies for instance, and you come up here, this window, you can open this and now when you scroll through all of your potential fonts, it's going to show you what that word actually will look like in all the different fonts that your computer has got installed. Now, after you've typed everything out, done spell check, you're ready to go. First thing you should do, this is step number one before you edit or anything, but actually you're not gonna be able to edit anything unless you do this. If you take your text and you try to just leave it as is, for one, it's not going to cut right because we've got these lines. They need to be joined together and we'll get to that. But two, when you upload this onto your Torchmate machine, the machine here at the school doesn't have this font installed. So it's not going to recognize this in this format, this font, and it's gonna to ask to replace it. So before you do anything, what you've gotta do is come up to Arrange and Text to Graphics. What that does is that changes it from a font. So now when I click each individual letter, they are now just lines on the screen. They're no longer recognized as a font or a text which means I can also double click on this line and I could come in and edit and change these nodes. That's what these blue dots are. Now to bring up the nodes is you just hover over it so you see that crosshair and you double left click and that will bring up your nodes. And to exit this, you need to hit apply. Now, that these are no longer a text item. We need to weld them together. Otherwise, when this machine comes through to cut, it's gonna follow each one of these lines. And after each one of them, there's not gonna be material there to cut and you could crash the machine. So we've gotta weld these items together. This will be repeated for other things that we're gonna be going over or covering. But for your, your words, your letters, this is a basic way to do it. You can click each letter one by one, but see how it doesn't leave the others highlighted. If you wanna do that and you click one, you have to hold down shift on your computer, and then you can click the next letter and the next letter, or you can click and drag and highlight all the letters that are overlapping. Now that you've got all these highlighted and they're overlapping, you're gonna come over to these weld tools. And we're just going to do a basic weld. We'll get to these other types of welds in other videos. After you hit basic weld, you can see now 
that the letters are joined like as if you did actually write this in cursive. You need to do that with the T and H here, or I mean the H and the E. Same thing, so highlight both of them and you can click and drag or you can click individually and hold shift and come over to the weld tools and hit basic weld. Okay, this is where things can get a little different depending on if you're going to leave these letters outside of an object. Let's say we just wanted to cut out the monies and it wasn't inside of an object. Then we're good to go. But if we wanted to, let's say, cut this on an oval or something, we'll come up to the shape tools, which is these. And I'm just gonna click this and I can click and drag and make an oval. Click off somewhere, stretch this just to show you the example. If we're gonna cut these letters out of a plate, that's what this plate or this circle here will now be steel and the letters will be cut away. They'll drop out. Those are your drop offs. We have to come in and bridge these letters. Okay, what I mean by bridge is break these lines so that this part here stays with the rest of the metal versus just dropping through and leaving it a silhouette. If we don't bridge these, the machine is just gonna cut everything out. And once it cuts the outside edge, there's not gonna be anything left there to cut because this is gonna drop through. And instead of it looking like an E, it's just gonna show the silhouette and it won't have this inside detail. So we have to bridge, is what I call it, bridge these letters. You don't have to do that when you are doing letters outside of an object. So I'm gonna go through and show you how to do that with this letter E. The quickest way I do this is I just come back to the shape tools and I come over to this rectangle and I'm going to click and drag to make a little shape, a little bridge is what I call it. Up here at the top, you can see it's width and it's height. The absolute thinnest bridge you ever want to try to do is one eighth of an inch. So up here on the width, I'm going to punch in 0.125 because an eighth inch is 125 thousandths. Or if you cannot remember the conversion, once you click up here, if you put one over eight and hit enter, it will convert it to decimal for you. All right, once you've got this made, click off somewhere on the grid. We have this little rectangle. Now I'm gonna shrink it a little bit this way and bring this. I like to bridge my letters as close to the edges as possible with ease or, well, with this O, it might be a little different or tricky. You'll have to just use your eye to figure out which way you want it bridged. But like for the Y, I would bridge it right here. I just, I wouldn't bridge it randomly in the middle of, of an item. For the S, I would bridge it right here. For A's and D's and O's and, and things like that with regular font, they're all to the left or right, usually not right down the middle unless it's a O. Now, we'll bring this as close as we can get it and then you can see your cursor turns to a little hand. We're gonna click and drag that so we can try to get it as close to lined up as that edge as possible. All right. Now that we've got it somewhat close, what we're gonna do is highlight both the rectangle and the letter. And I'm just gonna hold shift down and click, click whatever item I'm gonna to try to weld this to or bridge it to. And we'll come over to the weld tools. And this time we're gonna hit X or weld. All right, you'll see what that does here in a second, but basically it allows us to delete this center piece. Once I've hit that X or weld, I click off somewhere. Now, when I click on that rectangle, it's no longer a rectangle, it's just showing these pieces. And you can come in and delete these items one by one. You just hit delete on your keyboard.
it's going to say, hey, uh, you're going to delete this. Are you sure you wish to proceed? I'm just going to hit yes. And same at the bottom. Now, we're not going to leave it like this because we have these lines. And like I mentioned before, to edit your nodes or your lines, you've just got to double left click. And I'm going to come in and highlight that node by clicking on it and hit delete. Now you can also come over to the node and hold down on your right clicker. And what that does is brings up some other potential tools and we'll get to these in other, other videos, but we're gonna just slide over to the trash can and then let go and that deletes it as well. You can also click and drag on these lines to adjust like to make sure it follows the same curve. Once we've got that done, we come back up here to the top and hit apply. All right, now that is going to be bridged and done correctly. And I'll show you, I'm gonna connect everything. So I'll go up to arrange and connect. And if you guys are doing this at home, you need to have four zeros, one and then a zero when we do this connect. We'll hit OK. Now what I can do is do a show fill to show what this would look like cut out. I'm going to come up and I can go view and hit show fill. And that will blacken this and it's a good visual reference to see, OK, what's going to be metal and what's going to be dropped away. And Obviously the white here that's showing through to the grid, that's what's gonna be cut away and the black is gonna be our steel, our sheet metal. Now, the quick code for this is Alt S, so you can go back and forth. But if we zoom in, now you can see how this sheet metal is going to come in and bridge through and hold this little E hole up versus it dropping through. If you look on this E over here, there's no bridge connecting this E hole. And that sheet metal is not connected to anything, so it would drop through. We'll get to more text items in other videos. I'm trying to keep these as short and sweet as possible.